Hi traders, in this video we're going to be talking about why it's important not to try to fight the Fed and more importantly why you shouldn't have the fear of missing out or FOMO when it comes to the current price of the S&P 500. It's important to always understand that you need to let the price action tell you what to do. So let's get started right after this intro. And for anyone that feels like this guy here, you don't need to worry because the price action will show you the way. Okay, so I'd just like to remind everybody, of course, like, comment if you have any questions below, subscribe and hit that bell to see more daily content that we're gonna be pushing out as this crisis unfolds. So here we have the S&P 500 daily futures contract, and we can see that the market has obviously had a recovery. Everyone has been discussing that. What's important though is to focus on the price action and what the price action is going to be telling us. So let's talk about some technicals that I'm seeing on the S&P 500 right now. Firstly, this is a clear level of support becoming resistance or role reversal. And that's that highlighted kind of 2800 to 2900 zone. The second point I wanna make is that there is a shooting star or some people will call them pin bars candle that was formed yesterday on the futures contract. Now these candles are generally a bearish candle and they show that the bears are in control during that day and they've pushed the market down after the bulls have been controlled potentially in the morning or at some period. But this has happened a few times in this potential bull trap. Look how many times there's been shooting star candles showing potential bears in control and then the market has trapped them. And this is what Wall Street likes to do. You really need to think about it from the perspective of someone wins and someone loses in trading. And unfortunately, retail traders or many traders out there don't see it that way and they don't realize that the big guys know what they're doing. They have billions of dollars and they basically can get all the information at their fingertips straight away. So price action really tells us as traders what these big guys are doing, very important fact. So the shooting stars have not been working out. But another important thing about shooting stars and price action is that you must wait for further confirmation. Just because you see a shooting star and you think it's good, they're actually only about 56% good. So they're not even statistically good enough to take them every single time. Usually you want them to happen around resistance points and that's what we've seen here yesterday, but it's been followed up by a bit of a bullish candle. So it's very important to see that bullish candles coming through. If that was to make a new high, I would expect potentially further bullish movement and then the market would potentially come back down, find role reversal at this previous, what was support became resistance, becomes support again, and then the market would maybe move back up. In terms of distance for where the movement could be, the easiest way to do it is to take previous price history and see whether it's doing something similarly again and again and again. And that's what we see here. That movement, the first movement, happened a second time. And what if it was to happen a third time? Where would that push the market? And you can see that it would push the market into previous support that could become resistance and it would be around that 3200 zone. Now I would expect the market to actually stop here, which is about this 3100, because that was previous resistance. And if it does get up here and fully bull trap everybody, that would be the expectation for the bull side. Let's now talk about the bear side though, and talk about what we're seeing in the market and what potentially could happen even after tonight's Fed meeting. And again, if you're watching this video, not by today, you will learn a lot of things through this, so stay tuned. Here, we've got the shooting star. What if the market was to reject this again and then move lower. Upon the market getting under yesterday's low, there is going to be orders and that is important. There's going to be market orders, sell limits, sell stops, those kind of things sitting underneath this area. So when the market, let's say turned around, this would trigger a wave of selling. And if that selling continued, we could expect it to come back down to this previous level of support. Now, if that happened, and it bounced off that because you'd expect some buying pressure to come in here. And then we saw it come back down again and it would breach this level. What would actually be forming is what we call a double top. And a double top's a very important pattern because a double top shows the end of a trend and the start of a new trend. So that would basically break this current bull trap trend 
And this level here would be, I guess, where a lot of market momentum would come in. They would go for the range. So the range of this double top pattern and that range would then be extrapolated out. And I'd expect this to become a next level of support. And of course, the final level of support down here would happen. And then after that, we could potentially see what many people think could happen, which is back down to the 2200s, maybe even the 2000s, maybe even pre GFC kind of highs. So where we will see super support and that's a zone we'll talk about on videos on this channel over time as this unfolds. So this is the bear scenario and it's important to always think it's like chess. If we see one thing, then we need to think the counteracting thing as well because price action is going to, at the end of the day, dictate the decision that we need to make. We can see that there is a problem in the US economy, that the Fed is potentially juicing the US economy and putting tons of money into the market. But only just because we see that doesn't mean that everybody is doing that. The Wall Street guys, they know what they're doing and they're going to pressure us and change our psychology and do all sorts of things. And when we least expect it, it is going to happen. So very important facts from the price action standpoint. The last one I wanna talk about in terms of the case for the bull case scenario is the MACD. And I know many people don't like this type of MACD. I actually find this MACD indicator is quite good for spotting divergence and other things I like looking at. But when the MACD crosses from below the histogram to above in terms of this case, that is a very important factor that many of the big bankers look at. Goldman Sachs, UBS, any of those reports, if you've ever read them, they'll often discuss the movement of above and below the MACD from zero, from negative to a positive. And when that happened here, I actually expect this would be the zone where the market would start selling off. Of course it didn't, but that's the nature of this type of thing. It's gone further on and it's actually positive MACD now. So if it breaks to the upside, we could expect further buying momentum off that extra trillions of dollars of stimulus into the economy. And this could be the result. So this is the US retail and food services sales. And many of you may have already seen this. The importance of this is the damage that it's really doing to parts of the economy. Now it's clear that it's doing a ton of damage to tourism and all of those tourism industries, but look at the difference between the GFC lows month to month and what we've seen just out of the first data point. Crazy seasonal adjusted. It's just, it's, it's, it boggles my mind to see how low this has gone. And that definitely is putting a huge amount of pressure on businesses. If we look at this second one, the contributions to month change, look at the positives and the negatives. So when we consider that number was net negative, look at the food and beverage. The hoarders, definitely pushing food and beverage up. General merchandise stores, doing okay. But of course, food and service drink places, they could be doing very poorly for a very long time. Massive pressure on small businesses, clothing, bad, gasoline, obviously shocking. We can see that with oil. Motor vehicles and parts dealers, just expect that to get potentially worse, especially if we stay rel relatively sedentary as a global economy and global people. These figures, they just don't lie. This is from the US Census Bureau. I mean, it's these figures are very, very important as a precursor of the rolling effects that we're gonna see during this crisis. So pay attention to everything that's coming out, absorb as much inf information as possible, but at the end of the day, follow the price action. And confirmation, very important. Confirmation is key to price action trading. Now, as a price action trader, we also want to be really well informed. So it's very important that we consider the news that's coming out and we stay on top of when key events are happening. So here we've got the Forex Factory website and we can see tonight there's advanced GDP, FOMC statement, very important, and of course the press conference. These are all incredibly key events that we'll wanna be aware of, especially if we're day trading the S&P 500 on the smaller time frames. If you're investing longer term or shorting longer term, these still are very key points, but certain points you won't need to pay as much attention to as others. Another good thing about this Forex Factory website and any of these calendars that you use is usually you can click on this, see actual forecast and have all of these key data points from the history that you can go check out and say, okay, well, what happened? How accurate are these guys? 
if they're not accurate, what happens? Let's go check that data point in the actual market. Now, this is what happened during the GFC in terms of this advanced GDP. And you can see that the first one and the second one and all those types of things and how accurate the economists were. But if they're not accurate, it really moves currencies, it really moves instruments, indices, all these things move a lot. So important to stay on top of economic news. The last point I really wanna bring up in this video is the US obviously plans to lend 500 billion to large companies. But the problem with this is they don't require them to preserve jobs or limit executive pay. I mean, it's just shocking. This is from the Washington Post. And I tell you what, it's, it's, it doesn't bode well. I mean, obviously companies might be doing well, but it's terrible to think that the Fed is not going to have restrictions and anything like that placing, placed on them when they're seeking financial help. And this shows how knee-jerk this reaction is and how potentially catastrophic this event is because we might be looking at a, a literal scenario where America has 20% unemployment, we're looking at a 2,800 S&P 500, and that's six months on from now. And that's just shocking to me. So I think the Fed needs to take a hard look at what the market's currently doing, at the fact the market is literally reacting and doing very well off this stimulus that's being put in there. And they need to think, well, we want to get it to the real, we want to get to the people and the small businesses. How do we do that? Maybe we pull back on certain areas, we let the market go back to being a partial free market, and then we move forward. So I tell you what, it's a very, very, very key time for traders out there. If anyone's just getting into trading, I think that this is a super pivotal point in all of my 12 years of experience trading the markets. I've never seen anything like this. I came in during the GFC, so I definitely saw that, and believe me, there was a lot of similarities, but at the same time, we've never seen the Fed get involved in the market so much and effectively completely prop the market. So follow the price action, follow confirmation, and we really hope that you've enjoyed this video. And please like, comment, and subscribe. And of course, join our Telegram groups. We've got a public Telegram group with I think it's over five to 600 great traders in there that are all sharing ideas and concepts, and that's just great. So make sure you get involved in the community, and we really appreciate you watching this video. We'll see you in the next one.